Okay, I'm saying this now. She better still be in her original clothing, or I am throwing someone out of a f***ing window. Whether someone is drunk, kidnapped, or otherwise, you don't undress them, unless you have a female maid. That's just basic courtesy. Oh my god, she's naked! REGGIE! REGGIE! I am going to throw him out of a window. Does anyone have Pandora's number? Trust me, like two seconds. Hey Pandora! Yeah, it's about Reggie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, he likes stripping girls naked while they're unconscious. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, he's at castle number 23. Like, f 30 seconds later, he, he would be in South Africa. Or the desert. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so we're doing this on Thursday, even though the thing dropped like 13 hours ago to avoid spoilers. Uh, so, we'll keep it nice and short. We'll keep it nice and quick, and we'll keep it nice and concise. And luckily I watched episode 3 a couple of days ago, so it's all fresh in my mind. Uh, but there was something that I found very funny and I want to share, and I think it's very, very accurate. Um, it's this one. <laughs> I'd like to say that this is 100% accurate. 100%. 100%. I love the memes. The memes keep me well fed. Uh, but yeah, four towers, four archbishops following a script. I don't know, four and four. I mean, logically speaking, if you have the archbishops at your command, use them, right? They, they can be your officers, they can be your captains, they can be your whatever. And if you need to take and hold a installation, use them. I mean, they're very good at getting the job done, right? But the fact that it's four and four, I don't know, maybe I'm overthinking it, but the fact that there is four and four, and the fact that there is a witch's body somewhere in the city, you know what I mean? It's, it's almost like a requirement. You need to take four particular locations or four particular locations act as keys or four particular locations or sites where you have to do a certain thing at the same time and you need someone of a certain magical affinity or strength or you know what I mean like the fact that there's four and four somehow I don't know you know what I mean I don't know it, it just kind of feels intended very very um it's a very particular thing but anyway it I don't know that's just me that's just me maybe I'm overthinking it maybe I'm not let's just watch it let's just see how we go it should be fun like simple as that it should be fun it should be good in the hood uh, it's fresh. Thankfully, I'm spoiler free. <laughs> it's too risky to wait like five days. Like, it's really bad to wait like five, six days. It's too risky. The internet is too messed up for that. All right, let's do it. Oh, and by the way, I, I was doing this the past two days. You see all this stuff that they have over the bricks? When you got to put the, um, what's it called? Uh, you, you put the Zoro fill on and then you put the bitumen on to waterproof it. I was literally doing that for the past two days. 10 hours a day in the hot Aussie sun. For like 30, 40 cubic meters. Probably more. I never want to do that again. <laughs> so the fact that this is coming off makes me go like, oh no. Someone should really do something about that. <laughs> someone should really do something about the waterproofing because this is going to start soaking up the moisture and when this starts soaking up the moisture and it goes on the other side of this retaining wall it's good like you don't want moisture like i'm telling you now you don't want it and you definitely don't want to leak but anyway like, like me <laughs> i'm looking at things differently now <laughs> damn it and these corners are a bitch. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's not go there. Let's just start. Well, someone had fun. Oh, 
Okay, I'm gonna be that guy. I'm gonna be like, if you stumbled upon, the, I'm, I'm gonna be that guy. I am literally gonna be that guy. If I just walked up and there's a bunch of bodies on the ground, right? The first thing I'm gonna be doing is like, you know what I mean? And they literally walk up to the bodies and there's two people in hoods, literally in hoods. They in no way blend into anything. You know what I mean? How do you not notice that? And look at these two swords. Anyone thinking Sunriser? No, Sundowner. Sundowner. Where the hell did I get Sunriser from? Sundowner. Look at him. He's fat and he's got two swords. That's Sundowner. Very interesting. <clears throat> this is this is very interesting. You've got you you've got your good old fashioned standard sword. Standard. And then you've got this big chunky thing with weight on the edge, which is for big like strength chops, you know what I mean? Strength chops with the guards, obviously, but like big, heavy strength chops, you know, almost like a cleaver, right? So this needs to be someone, you know, like strong. And this one is your standard sword, um, you know what I mean? Like standard, right? I have a mental blank. I'm forgetting what it's called. <laughs> like, I'm forgetting what it's called. I fucking have two of them, and I'm forgetting what it's called. It's that bad, man. It's 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 fucking Thursday. My brain's not working. No shit. This guy's arm is completely off. No, do not fight two people by yourself, Garfield. Please, don't be a Subaru. Please, don't be a Subaru. That is probably true. Is it possible to call for backup? I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Oh, look at that. Priscilla is scheming. Who could have seen that coming? Couldn't Reinhardt just, like, jump and go grab Priscilla and literally bring her right back in the room and be like... You know what I mean? It, it's not like any of Priscilla's guards can stop Reinhardt. You know what I mean? Like, what are you gonna do? Hold Felt hostage? Okay. He'll just take your retainer instead. Like, it's Reinhardt. <laughs> It's literally Reinhardt, like, what are you gonna do? Just 
Well, that council of ten is about to be kidnapped. I'm telling you now. Remember how last episode I said it would be cool if there is a character that simply chose to join the other side because of whatever reason that the other side simply was in line with whatever they wanted? I'm going to put a, my money on that she was offered immortality and she took it. I, I, I'm putting my money on that one because I saw her teeth and they look pretty vampiric to me. So if you have a royal that doesn't want to die, and I'm guessing many of them don't, and they had the opportunity to become immortal, I am willing to bet that one of them would take it, and I think this one could be that. The plot thickens. If, if they deliver on what I thought would be an awesome idea, I will be very happy about this. But it is crucial that the person's motivation makes sense. <laughs> So far, so good. Does he have blood on his shirt? Oh, she got stabbed. Okay, you know what pisses me off? And people are gonna get upset because I'm being purely logical. You have two to three rulers in a room. You would assume that the building is being guarded. And Garfield with an injured person makes it to the front door. Of said room. And there's no one either assisting him or any sort of guard. Whatever. It's probably some magic augmented blade that prevents its wounds from being closed with magic and then you can only like stop it with bandages. But the problem with the bandages is that the bandages will still like soak up a lot of blood. So you would still need a blood transfusion because blood loss is probably going to cause the death. So yeah, the bandage will stop additional bleeding at a certain point, but like... Does anyone have a matching blood type? I mean, cat girl's got like three siblings. Get one of them here right now. Stat. You know what I mean? Okay. He knows what's up. Something's, something's familiar. So he knows one of the two people that attacked them. Otherwise he wouldn't react to the cut like that.
Okay, so she's leading them. So it's possible that there's five archbishops. We know there's four, there could be five. Either that or one of the towers is weaker than the others. As soon as I see this guy with the rings, I automatically think from that asshole in Ace Attorney. So is anyone gonna call one of the? Oh yeah, the, okay. So the siblings also probably have the same wound because they're all somehow magically connected. So possibly instead of one of the siblings receiving 100% of the attack, the three of them receive 33% of the attack. Or possibly four of them receive 25% of the attack. Which means they're all injured. Which isn't good. Okay, I am gonna be that guy, and this is probably just me watching too many, you know, videos from former FBI hostage negotiators. But if it is impossible for you to deliver on a demand, it might be beneficial for you to be like, we are happy to comply, but we are unable to move her. How should we proceed? You know what I mean? It's like, I'm not saying no, I am trying to deliver. But there is an obstacle. You know what I mean? Like, you're essentially buying time. You know what I mean? But that's just me. And I frankly don't think the witch cult cares. But, like, worth a shot. Let me guess. It's completely under this entire city. So the witch's remains is literally the cornerstone of the entire city. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so these ones are still walking around, so their wound is not as bad as hers. So start the blood transfusion. Unless blood loss isn't a thing in this thing, but anyway. This is why you don't want to fight against two people. Oh, that is like the worst time to be hallucinating. What the literal shit?
Yeah, this is kind of why you have to resolve your... ...issues before going into con- Those are deadly. See, I don't know whether it's a fear response... ...or it's trauma-infused. Because... ...it hit him when he was running away... ...from when he saw his mother... ...and now it's hitting him... ...in midst of combat. I don't know if it's linked to his fight-or-flight response. But if it is... ...very bad. Hopefully it's just purely psychological and somehow he can... I don't know, did she somehow poison him and this is a slow-acting reaction from the poison of the daggers? I don't know, but it's, it's clearly something that needs to be resolved. You know, I have to give credit to the um, two-sworded sword guy. He didn't reveal that he had additional arms. Until he was already in combat, and then he used it as an ace in the hole. That is clever. Because, you know what I mean? Like, you don't expect it. Do you know them? A four-handed, two-handed sword wielder, and another sword wielder that did this cut. Wilhelm, you seem to be very versed in sword people. Well, that's fucking bad. You see, I have to give credit to Beast Bro here because he's rationalizing the situation for him to stop him from blaming himself. See, that's a really big thing. When something goes wrong, a lot of people blame themselves and that cripples them. It, it, they're, they're unable to function afterwards because they're scared of screwing up again. Whereas Beast Bro here is trying to avoid that by reinforcing that it wasn't your fault. She chose to fight. She chose to be there. She chose to do this. Like, it's not your fault. You can't blame yourself. You can't blame... You, you know what I mean? Like, he's 100% being a bro here. And not only that, they do the same thing in the military. Like, you gotta keep people's heads in the game. That's half the job. Beast bro is good bro. See what I mean? Beast bro is good bro. I mean... From Julius's perspective, you literally had a winning strategy from the jump. Hey Julius, this might not make sense, but I need you to do this, this, and this, and when the guy is there, I want you to stab him. Subaru, what the fuck are you talking about? No, trust me. Just go to this cave, and when this hooded guy appears there, stab him. He's like, okay, fine, you fucking crazy motherfucker, I'll just wait at this random cave in the middle of fucking nowhere. Why the fuck is there a random cave in the middle of nowhere? Two minutes later, fucking Sloth appears. How the fuck did that happen? Of course he's gonna think Subaru is some magical fucking bunny rabbit. You, you do realize in this situation, Amelia is probably the safest person, right? Like, if the guy's objective is to marry the girl, he's not going to kill the girl. At the very least, for a few days. Whereas, you've got an entire city that's currently being held hostage by a bunch of witch cult archbishops that seem intent on killing people. I hate to be the party pooper here, 
but I'm thinking that the witch cultists, are archbishops willing to kill people, might be a slightly larger priority than some guy that wants to bang Amelia. But that's just me. But here's the penis thinking again. Oh my god, it's learning! Oh my god, it's becoming sentient. But don't you think they'll anticipate that? I mean, that's also going to be the most heavily guarded place. I'm gonna be a really boring person, but has anyone tried to get in contact with Reinhardt? I mean, she may have lost her memory, but her instincts should still work. And so should her muscle memory. Because your muscles actually do retain some memory. So she should be okay. There is, however, a slight problem. Her timing is going to be off. It's going to take a little while for her timing to return, even if she has the muscle memory. So you kind of don't want her jumping into the deep end. But I think she did a lot of that with retraining with Wilhelm, so she should be okay. But I definitely wouldn't put her up against, like, the strongest people. Because, you know. See, this man's on it. You know, I would actually love to train under that man. He seems like the type, like, I would actually love to train under him. Did he just make a Berserk reference? I mean, that was always going to be the case. See, that makes me nervous because he didn't he give Greed his name? I mean, considering that two people are injured in this party. See, this was one of the elements I was talking about in the year of training. You really got to master your fight or flight response. If you let it overwhelm you, you become jittery, you become too rash, and you act reactively rather than proactively. So you won't utilize it as energy to do what you want to do, but rather you'll become so jumpy that you'll start overreacting and reacting to every little thing, and you're basically fucked.
Julius being a bro. Everyone's being a bro. Beast Bros being a bro. Julius being a bro. Even Wilhelm being a bro. Actually, if you're doing that, I'll give you a quick little trick. Breathe in, go. Then do a little more. They'll actually get it in your diaphragm. And that will actually get the oxygen into your muscles and lungs a lot more than just going. Because you can always fit more in. Try it. Literally, try it. Inhale as much as you can. Pause for a split second and try to sharply inhale a little bit more. That's going to push so much more oxygen into your lungs. Whenever you only have about 5-10 seconds to get oxygen, like in between rounds or in the middle of a fight where you disengage, use that. You will get air back into your muscles. Best way to train that, interval sprinting. When you're sprinting like 100 meters or something, and then you slow down for like 10-15 seconds, train to be able to do breathing like that. Breathing control. And then sprint again. Breathing control. Sprint again. Breathing control. Sprinting again. You need to... Like, the body can be hacked in so many ways. It's not even funny. Hack the shit out of it. And then once you learn how the mechanisms work, and your perception is good, your timing is good, you know how to use your adrenaline. You'll get into this sort of... I don't want to call it a trance, but you'll get into this trance when you're fighting people that you can actually feel when they're breathing. Like, you will connect to them on this level where you can feel when they're breathing. And the real trick is, when they breathe out, attack. They don't have oxygen. If you know how to press that advantage, and you've got that awareness, and you're just synced up to them, you can press them. And you'll notice all the little things. The little nervous thing, the shoulder slightly down, the hesitation, the fear. Just, just go, f trust me, just, just fucking do it. All these little things, like imagine if he developed some of these things at some capacity. But anyway, lucky he's got a posse of people here that are kind of keeping him level. But I, I would have liked to see some development in some areas at some point. Three seasons and two movies in. But it is what it is. Oh god, they're creating more minions. So these things consume bodies. Do they turn them into something or does it consume them and create something bigger? Keep your cool. You've got the numbers advantage. You need to go for blind spots. Someone needs to fight them head on. Someone needs to flank them. You need to possibly separate them. Don't let them work together. Separate them. Go for blind spots. Don't just, like, work together, damn it. Yes, good. He's airborne. Use it to your advantage. It's a very classic sort of parry that they did. But one thing that confuses me. Unless Wilhelm is left-handed... The blade's on the wrong side. Wait, is Wilhelm left-handed? 
No, he's right-handed. So why is his blade under the other person's blade? That doesn't make any sense. See what I mean? Like, this is his blade. So why is this blade over his blade? I'm so confused. It's almost like he's pulling. I, I'm so confused. What the fuck? Blind spots, blind spots, blind spots. Good boy. Oh, fuck off. You make champ, motherfucker. I said to separate them! Separate them. They work as a team. Separate them. They compensate for each other's weaknesses. You've got the numbers advantage. Come on, guys. Plus, the other guy's down a sword. But come on, guys. What the hell? You know how I keep making the joke? How the little girl is secretly a thousand-year-old dragon with a penis? Well, this is not exactly what I had in mind! Okay, it was technically what I was saying, but you get my point. It was a joke, not an instruction manual. It wasn't a suggestion. It was a joke. God damn it. Now the little girl's a dragon. I am so confused. So, the symbol of lust is a dragon. This is basically Shrek now. Okay, I thought she was a vampire. She's actually a dragon. Close enough. Please don't do that action with your tongue. Wait, but technically she's over 50 years old, so it shouldn't be inappropriate that she's doing that action with her tongue. If anything, she should be very good with- Okay, stop now. You need to control your emotions in battle. You get angry or thrown off balance, everything goes out the window. Come on, basics, man. Oh my god, this guy is the guy that's chilling him out. Let me guess, dragons are cute little... No, no, I'm not going there. Him talking about beauty is one of the things that I find cringe about him. Like the time he saw Rem and Ram, and he's like, Yay! We have maids here! My fantasy is coming true! And then he sees another little girl, and he's like, Yay! And I'm just like, Oh, God. And now he's doing it to a fucking dragon. He's not a Pokemon!
Hey, she's got a sense of humor. I appreciate that. But again, has anyone actually tried to contact um, Reinhardt? Damn it, everyone's sticking to the script. What is this, Resident Evil 4? This is literally turning into Resident Evil 4! To bypass the village fight, just ring the bell. The bell rings. Well, better get going now. Sirius has the biggest heart on for mass murdering people at the town square. Well, that's my cue to leave. Like, this freaking bell, man. What if someone just hits the bell early? I'm pretty sure they're not going to be checking the time that it's like five or ten minutes early, you know what I mean? Wait, so even the two combatants left, or are the two combatants still here and they just chose to stand there while you guys were talking to the dragon? Is this an episode of JoJo? I'm kind of confused what's going on here. You guys were in the middle of a fight, what's going on? Wait, so these two were just patiently standing there while you were talking to the dragon? You want me to believe that these two that were engaged with you in combat just patiently stood there while two of you were talking to the dragon and Julius was casting an ability. Uh-huh. If he lands on his legs, it's gonna hurt like a bitch! Told you... Is this some kind of wushu master with the way he's dressed? This man sounds like a man that has done the 72 hour fast. He knows what he's talking about. Yes, by all means, charge in emotionally driven. I am not remembering the name Roy. It's too common. It's too common of a name for me to remember. I can't remember how to spell Reggie's name, so I just call him Reggie. Because I either spell it as uh, R-E-G-E-L-U-S. Or I spell it as R-E-G-U-L-U-S And I keep getting it wrong and I'm like, effort, I'm just calling you Reggie At this point, I, I'm just calling you Reggie It's just easier, I call you Reggie and I'm right every time <laughs> And I'm calling the dragon girl Lugia But that was before I found out she was a dragon So calling her Lugia now actually makes sense 
Because she's a fucking dragon. So I could call her Lugia. So I've got Reggie and Lugia. No chance in hell I can remember Roy. So like, fuck that. Shadow Lugia. That works even better, man. Shadow Lugia works. Uh, it just works, man. It just works. Uh, and, and what was it? I think there was another one? I forget. There's supposed to be a four. Oh, yeah. Serious. Serious, I remember. And so... Yeah. Reinhardt would be a great asset. That's why I'm wondering. Has anyone actually tried to call him? Like, you've got a room full of people, but apparently only the, um... Uh, you know, the guy that was in the group of people that shanked Subaru can actually call for Reinhardt. But I kind of feel like... I don't know. You would think in some sort of scenario for security reasons, it wouldn't be a bad idea for various knights in the order to be able to communicate with each other. You know what I mean? Like, I can, I can understand that every single knight or guard is dedicated to a particular faction, but... I find it a little bit, eh, that a knight like Julius or Reinhard, sorry, Julius or Wilhelm can't, you know, have a mechanism to contact Reinhard. Like, you know what I mean? You would think the Order of the Knights would be able to communicate with each other in some way, shape or form in a world that has magic. I mean... You know, like, what happens if the kingdom is under attack and Reinhardt isn't around? Well, too fucking bad, right? Congratulations, you're in another castle, Princess Peach. Okay, I'm saying this now. She better still be in her original clothing, or I am throwing someone out of a fucking window. Whether someone is drunk, kidnapped, or otherwise... You don't undress them, unless you have a female maid. That's just basic courtesy. Oh my god, she's naked! Reggie! Reggie! I am going to throw him out of a window. Does anyone have Pandora's number? Trust me, like two seconds. Hey, Pandora. Yeah, it's about Reggie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, he likes stripping girls naked while they're unconscious. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, he's at castle number 23. Like fucking 30 seconds later, he, he would be in South Africa. Or the desert. This is, this is, this is, this is just, no. And on top of that, look at that wall. Not only has the render peeled, but like the paint too. Castle my ass. What is this, a third world country? Why is she naked, Reggie? Why is she naked? I'm calling Pandora. I'm I'm calling Pandora. Someone call Pandora. <laughs> I mean... Philosophical differences aside... I, I still think Pandora being a girl... Could empathize with the scenario of waking up naked... In some strange place... And Reggie asking you if you're a virgin... I, I am pretty sure Pandora would, would side with me on this one. I, I'm pretty sure she would. 
As would I would think all women. Cause what the fuck? What the fuck, Reggie? What the fuck? Who does that? What the fuck, man? What the fuck? Wow. That was... Con wow. Okay, that's a head spin. Reggie just made the list. Reggie just made the list. Reggie just made the list. Wow. I went from cheering on him for him in episode 3 to he's on the list now. He's on the list. And trust me, that list is not actually very long. It's a very short list. But he's on it. That's like record timing. What list? The woodchipper list. God invented woodchippers for a reason. His wives could have stripped her for him. There was no need to. They could have changed her into a nightgown or something. What, you're telling me he can't afford a nightgown? Because he can't even afford to repair his wall? Uh, correct me if I'm mistaken, but in Islam, you're allowed to have as many wives as you can afford. As long as you can have a household for each wife and you can financially support each wife and family. This motherfucker can't even af afford a robe and to fix his wall. And he wants another wife. I'm sorry, but I don't think this is halal. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is not halal. Aren't they in the city still? I don't care what his excuse is. I don't care what his excuse- If they're still in the city, it's even worse that he stripped her. Because then he would have absolutely no reason to- You get what- Like, imagine you went, like, home from a dirty city, like that city, right? And you take your shoes off at the front door, as you do. And you want to take a shower or something. Okay, if you had a maid or a wife and, like, take off the dirty clothes because she was in combat, that's fine. Put her in a robe or something. Like, you know, that's fine, right? But, like, if you're still in the city and you're there by yourself and you strip this girl naked and just throw her in a bed, like, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? That is, that is just bad. That is just creep. That, that is bad. Like, what the fuck's going through your head? Whew. I don't like that. Well, he is a witch cultist. They are not known for being too normal. That has nothing to do with normality. Like, being a witch cultist, like... You, you could, you could be a witch cultist and still not be that. You know what I mean? Like, that, that's, that's an extra step. That's an extra step. What were you actually expecting from Reggie? I was expecting a King Bowser scenario where he takes Amelia to one of his many castles and in each castle he has like a different wife and then he just plays on the piano like Bowser from the movie. And, I don't know, something corny like that, you know what I mean? Like, I was expecting something a little more extravagant. Something a little more classy? You know what I mean? Like, a nice castle? You know? Maybe, I don't know, wine and dine her or something until Stockholm Syndrome kicks in? You know what I mean? Like, Beauty and the Beast? I was expecting something like that. Not like, hey there, girl! You a virgin? It's like, what the fuck, man? Reggie's the biggest, like, fucking SJW. I have rights. I have a right for you to tell me your name. I have a right to be here because I'm an archbishop. Like, holy shit. In hindsight, Reggie's like an incel SJW. His first scene with Pandora was complaining about his rights. And then last episode, he's, he's complaining about his rights. While kidnapping a girl. Yeah, you know what? He should have been on the list a long time ago. I don't know how I didn't say it up until now, but he should have been on that list a while ago. I could see now why Pandora knocked him into the ground. He had it coming. This is just another Tuesday for Reggie. Is that bad, man? Is that bad?
God damn it. I- is there any way to kick him out of the witch cult? <laughs> you know, like, imagine, imagine being so bad that the witch cult kicks you out. You're kicked out by a bunch of murdering, sociopathic, psychopathic, you know, people for being this. Just kick him out of the witch cult. He's like, look, we may be murderers. We may be cannibals. We may be Satanists, you know, but even we don't do this. No, you, you can kill people, but you don't do this. It's just, it's just across the line. Well, that was interesting. He's like a Reddit mod and Sirius is like a Discord mod. That is a surprisingly accurate way of summarizing the two. A hundred percent. The fact that he doesn't know is a sign he didn't see anything. I am very aware, I am a student of history, and I know what they used to do at the end of marriage ceremonies before a marriage was consummated in a bedchamber, and they had the maidens uh, check whether or not the girl was a virgin, otherwise the marriage would be annulled. Um, But at the same time... Reggie, what the fuck? Yes, it is violation against his rights. What rights? What rights? He only has the privileges that are granted to him through Pandora, which is the privilege to speak and to exist. Amelia is 79th, right? So at least he has been doing this 78 times before. You know how they have that show 30 Day Fiance? This is like 30 Minute Fiance. But I somehow imagine that like his standards are just any girl with a pretty face. She doesn't even have to be a contestant for princess or queen or anything. He just grabs any girl with a pretty face. He's just like walking down the street and anytime he sees a girl with a pretty face, he just princess peaches them. He just grabs them and just goes home or something. Either that or he spikes their drink. Actually... I would like to see Reggie and Priscilla. That would be an interesting exchange of dialogue. Because Reggie would be all about owning women. And Priscilla would be all about, I already own everything. So none of them belong to you. And then Reggie would divert back to yelling and screaming and screeching about his rights. And Priscilla would just start dismantling him. It it, it would be like Reddit meets 4chan. It would be quite something. I would actually like to see a dialogue exchange between those two. It would be something to behold. I don't think Reggie would last very long in that conversation. He doesn't seem that witty to me. Priscilla is at least intelligent. I can see that she's intelligent. Reggie is just like... He comes across as a brat, really. Reggie would probably start being violent if he was losing the argument. Well, yeah. That's the vibe he's giving me. (laughs) He made the list, man. He made the list. And it's not even a long list. Like, I have- I have very, 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 very few requirements for people to, like, exist. And- and I have very few lines. And this is, like, one of those very rare lines that I have. And somehow he was just like, Hi, I'm Reggie. Pop! I'm on this side of the line now. It's just like, what the fuck, man? (laughs) Anyway, alright, that was- that was something. And we got a dragon. The thousand-year-old dragon with a penis trope is alive and well, kids. We can make her underaged as long as she's a dragon. (laughs) So fucked. That is so fucked, man. That is so fucked. We're gonna make Lust a little girl. But don't worry, I got this. She's a dragon. Anime, ladies and gentlemen. And now we wait another six days for the next one. But at least I'm not going to be spoiled. There were so many things that could have been spoiled in this episode. Like the dragon. That was a nice surprise. 
Hey, did I hand you a shrinking potion by accident? I could have sworn that was the gender swapping one. Don't be hating. She's fun size, that's all. She doesn't even have to get on her knees to blow. <laughs> You want to add anything to that conversation? Nope, I'm good. In fact, I think your new size makes you an even more formidable and stealthy ninja.